I am sorry. I, I only felt... It seems she's hurting you. I meant well. People always mean well. They cluck their thick tongues and shake their heads and suggest oh so very delicately. Of course, I've suggested it myself. But I hate to even think about it. She needs me. It's not as if she were a, a maniac, a raving thing. She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? Welcome back, everyone, to our channel. <laughs> I'm Nikki. And I'm John. And this is Nikki and John. Today we're going to talk about Psycho 1960. I'm so excited to talk about this. I have so many beautiful like things to point out. <laughs> Directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Written by Joseph Stefano. Robert Blotch. Cast includes Anthony Perkins, Janet Leigh, John Gavin, and Vera Miles. Norman Bates is a very tortured soul. You start to unravel him as the story goes. This woman has to make a bank deposit for her job, but she chooses to steal the money and run off with her boyfriend instead. Trying to flee and get away from everything and try to make this dream a reality, she stops off at the Bates Motel where she meets Norman Bates very shy, timid young man. And then once you get to know more of Norman, he seems a little awkward and strange, but still yet she feels that she's kind of care, caring for him because of the abuse he follows up with with his mother. Yeah. Norman has some issues. <laughs> yeah. And this is from 1960, so spoiler alerts ahead. This is not my fault if you have not seen it yet. <laughs> I think you've all known about the infamous shower scene. Exactly. So as you come to find, Norman has severe schizophrenia. Uh, any type of mental issue this guy could have, he has endured it throughout the abuse of his mother. His mother is really dead. He keeps her dead body in the, in the house and thinks that it talks to him which he's actually talking to himself, but in the voice of his mother, and he doesn't realize what he's doing. There's so many things about this movie that I absolutely love, and it's just, I just kind of get lost in it. It's like the rabbit hole for me. Yeah. Anthony Perkins alone in this movie is pure perfection. His eyes, his jawline, the, the, so the side profile, his nose, his hair, his shoulders are really long and broad, but it's almost weird because he's supposed to be this lanky outcast it everything fits this yeah. is a perfect fit in my in my opinion sometimes you just can't you can't get past the original the original sometimes is the best and that's typically that's the way the case goes yeah. and really no one else holds a candle to what anthony perkins did in this i mean right. in the 96 version vince vaughn i mean i like vince vaughn and all but i I wasn't buying it as much as Anthony Perkins. I have to say this. I This is something that I just felt so, like, vindicated for. Okay. One of my favorite things about this film is that it's black and white. And I love black and white films because, to me, there's so much more detail. And I could see so much more of the mood or the impression that the, the film is supposed to make. Yeah. So there is this scene there's many scenes of like shadows that looked really cool um between either norman or the other characters but there is this scene where he comes back and brings marion food and they're outside right in front of the office of the motel in the window reflection is norman right there like he's standing right there and then you see his reflection and it is the the coolest thing ever because i was like number one that just looks really cool number two i'm like oh my gosh 
is that supposed to like mirror his double personality? I was like, oh, okay, cool. I never, I never, I never confirmed it. Yeah. Until I looked up the facts for this film. Guess what? Guess what? (laughs) It's It's supposed to replicate like everybody in this film except Norman has a reflection somewhere in a mirror at some point. But I'm like, and and he, and it's supposed to like, he has no reflection, but it's like, okay, well, how did I know that about the one in the window? Yeah. You know, it's like, I think that that was the most jarring of all because I'm like, oh, you're seeing him right there physically, but there's another him that nobody sees, but we can see it in the glass. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm getting too into it. But (laughs) The mom, like it's the mom persona. That's another thing I wanted to point out. After Arbogast is killed and Norman is by the, the pond where he sinks the car and he turns yeah. around and like he, he just like turns his face really slow when he hears the guy yelling, I swear, go back and look at it. The way that the silhouette is over his face and the way that the shadow is just brushed against his face when he half turns, I swear you can see an old woman's face. Oh, really? We'll definitely be probably going back to check that out. Uh, you have to, because I have to see if it was just me. <laughs> the, the, the white on the outside of his face looks like a skeleton. And then the darkening looks like, you know, his mom's skull at the end. You know, the, the skeleton. Yeah. But I, 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 maybe I'm just like really creative. <laughs> Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee both agreed that they'd rather be typecast in this from this movie than not be remembered at all. This is a very, they're right. This is a very memorable, iconic film. Anthony Perkins did all of the installments in the Psycho franchise, which I love. I don't care what anybody says, I love all of them. The scene after Norman stabs Marion in the shower and he comes back as Norman and not as his mother, and right. he screams, Mother, oh God, mother, blood, blood. They actually took the the bass out of Anthony Perkins' voice so it sounded more high-pitched like a teenager's. This next fact does not surprise me because, in my opinion, Alfred Hitchcock was a fucking perv. There was a, yeah, there was a documentary, I forget what it was called, but it was about the making of the birds and how he was sexually harassing Tippi Hedren, which... <laughs> It's a great film if you can find it. Right. Still, he's such a jerk off. But anyway, um, he referred to Anthony Perkins on set as Master Bates. Yeah. Janet Lee never showered again after making this film, even though she used a body double in the killing sequence. She still felt that it made people feel vulnerable, so she took baths for the rest of her life after this. This story was inspired by Ed Gein, the guy that was known for the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre mostly um, also dabbled in a little bit of Sons of the Lambs. But I had read stories about this before, that this was supposed to be a depiction of how Ed's mother was towards him and how he dressed up like a woman and, and tried okay. to embody. This one's really silly and I love it. Now, I had heard that the blood scene in this black and white version was Hershey's syrup. Um, apparently it's Bosco. Bosco. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because I remember the Seinfeld episode where George Costanza had Bosco as his passcode. <laughs> I don't know. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Stupid fun fact. I love Seinfeld. I just thought like Bosco. <laughs> This was the highest grossing movie for him, and this was his first horror film. No wonder they kept on offering him more to do, you know? Like, right. It's a great story. It's a great movie. I mean, there's a little bit of, you know, old school touch campiness. Detective is falling down the stairs. Right. He's running backwards or something, you know? Like He's it was falling, way- yeah. And then you see his feet at the very, like, the very end of it, you see his feet go back, like, two steps, and then he's down. Yeah. Like, 
his feet were going backwards the entire time on the stairs after being stabbed instead of just strictly falling and rolling. Like you but probably it's such a cheesy moment in there. Yeah. You just you you still overlook yeah. it because the movie's so good. Well, yeah, and like you, back then you kind of expected those little and to I mean back then they weren't cheesy scenes. Right. Later on became cheesy scenes, just like eighties movies now we look at them like they have cheesy scenes, but at the time they weren't cheesy, like you know Yeah. Now but, they're iconic and it's epic. Yeah, right. <laughs> so like we look at it a different way like that, but you know, that's I think part of the lore and the, the love of these original classics like that is scenes yeah. like that. Because they were doing their best with what they had. They yeah. didn't have what we have today. So, you know, I think, you know, all the hard work, it paid off, you know? The yeah. part towards the end of the film where Norman uh, picks up and carries his mother out of the, the room in the house and it takes her down into the cellar. Yeah. When he's taking her out, this is like a goof, a big thing, but I think there's a purpose behind it. When he's carrying her out of the bedroom, she looks like full and more lifelike, you know, as he's carrying her down the stairs. But at the end scene, when Marion's sister finds, turns around and finds his mother's skeleton there, she's just a skeleton. Yeah. I get that could be a goof, but I think what, and this is just my opinion, I think what they wanted you to to think of is this is how he sees his mother. He's already embodying the way she she speaks. So yeah. for him in that moment, yes, she did look different because that's probably how he sees her. He sees her with flesh and stuff on her still. She's not a skeleton or a, a shriveled up body. She is a full figured woman. And that's how because we see him carrying her down the stairs, we're seeing it from his point of view. I'm going to give this movie a 4.2 because, I mean, it is a, a great movie. Lower points are maybe just like, I'm um, obviously now demonetized and I'm used to more horror, more uh, blood, more let's see the wounds kind of right. you know, movies if it wasn't for this movie it kind of paved the way for for uh, slasher movies as we know them i think i feel like that's definitely one of the originals that helped move that style of movie making along I mean, it involves the first scream queen who is jamie lee curtis's mom janet lee this one is definitely up there with the other ones that i had scored very very high on the chart this for me would have to be at least a 4.7 i i find it to be comforting in a way i don't know i just really like it i love the like i said i love the black and white i love the shadows of this film and it's just so weird how everything the atmosphere around it really creates the entire story and you may not notice it the first time you watch it i don't know i'm just i was just like oh <laughs> Oh, so 4.7. Woo woo. Awesome <laughs> Cycle was a great time. But now we have to move on to the next. And what is the next, Nikki? We are going to cover Saw 1 and Frighteners. I believe those will be your next two episodes that you guys will see. Until next time, guys, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, give us a comment, and uh, hope to see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.